Welcome back guys, today we're taking a look at 2015 Japanese mystery thriller film called Tag. The movie begins in a two-lane road where two buses full of girls are traveling. As the girls enjoy themselves, one of them silently writes poems. The pupils start a pillow fight and the poetic girl, Mitsuki, drops her pen. She bends down on the floor to pick it up when suddenly something slices the bus in half, including the students, teachers, and bus's hard iron body. Mitsuki gets showered in blood and stands flabbergasted to witness the horrifying incident that just occurred. The bus comes to a halt with the student's half-cut body still spitting out blood. In the meantime, a strong gust of air charges towards Mitsuki, but she dodges it. We then get to know that something's in the wind that's so harsh and sharp it's chopping off everything. Stunned to death, the schoolgirl runs away from the bus and on her way witnesses the carnage of the other bus. She steps through the chopped remains and runs off again. During her rush, the wind keeps attacking her, but she manages to dodge every time. A few paces ahead, some tourists also get chopped in half despite Mitsuki's effort to save them. Moreover, some cyclists pass her, but each of them end up as a carcass in horridness. Extremely devastated and disarrayed, Mitsuki shambles to a corpse-filled creek where she cleans off the blood, changes into another fresh uniform, and gets on with her run again. Upon crossing the fields, she enters the premises of a high school where the girls greet her. A girl named Aki gets a hold of her hand and greets her as if they're old friends. Mitsuki watches in perplexity as Aki and the other girls treat her as a long-lost friend. Suddenly, the wind starts to blow and Mitsuki starts shuddering and gets scared to death. They get up and proceed to the school building where the wind blows once again. Bewildered and terrified, Mitsuki runs inside. Up in the class, Aki manages to ask her what's bothering her. Still dazed, Mitsuki explains the bus's massacre amidst tears. Aki listens to her silently as Mitsuki keeps stating it might have been a hideous nightmare while tears flow down her cheeks. Outside, the gust of wind rattles the trees and Aki forcibly opens the window and lets Mitsuki feel the harmless ale. As nothing happens, Mitsuki finally calms down. Aki then offers to skip the lecture and they proceed to the other classrooms where they meet a girl named Tako. Mitsuki finds her immensely adorable, meanwhile the focus shifts to the other student named Sir, who got the name because of her surrealness. After a basic introduction, the four of them run away to skip the class but their teacher catches them. She tries to inquire Mitsuki of their purpose of mischief but the girls dodge her away and escape outside. The liberty and freedom engulf them as they dash freely through the fields and into the woods. Aki holds Mitsuki's hand as they trudge to the path to the lake. As they settle down to enjoy peace and serenity, Aki shares Mitsuki's nightmare with others. The three of them have a good laugh over it, but Sir remarks it's possible. With that, she explains the concept of parallel universes and how they can alter reality. She throws a stone into the lake and asks them to observe the ripples. As they approach the edge, a huge alligator suddenly emerges and attacks them ferociously. The beast lunges at Taco and bites between her legs. Her cries echo through the woods until suddenly all of them snap out of that situation and Sir remarks that such a thing can also happen. Afterwards, they find two pillows on the ground and start playing with it. Feathers fly everywhere and amidst the mystical scene, Mitsuki notices a notch of blood on her finger. Suddenly, her eyes fall upon a bride and her girlfriend standing on an edge. In the meantime, the girls enjoy themselves and Sir states to change fate, you need to do something unexpected spontaneously that you would not do normally. As their enjoyment proceeds, Aki remembers that the first period is ending soon. Therefore, they trudge their way back while Sir speaks out that life is surreal, don't let it consume you. Beaming with joy, Mitsuki accompanies Aki back to the class where the teacher arrives and starts to teach. Suddenly, Mitsuki finds a pillow on the floor, and just as she picks it up, all hell breaks loose and her classmates get brutally rained with bullets. All of them die, including Aki, and Mitsuki raises her head to see the teacher firing a minigun. Just then, Tako and Sir come to her rescue and they hide away in another class. Alas, another teacher comes up holding an assault rifle. She kills a student, and as an act of valor, Taiko tries to stop her. Unfortunately, the inhumane woman takes her out brutally by shooting Taco's hand off. Immediately afterwards, the bullets blow away half of her face and she dies. In a struggle to save Mitsuki, Sir is also murdered while trying to escape the room. She holds Mitsuki in her arms and shriek that life is surreal and she must not let it consume her. The last fatal bullet hits her and Mitsuki is on the run again. The school has become a hellhole with teachers raining bullets on the masses of students. They escape in the fields and another group runs beside Mitsuki who states it's all up to her to figure it out. Unfortunately, just as they escape the school premises, the wind catches up to them and slices all of the girls except Mitsuki. Traumatized and distressed, she runs off again for countless ages until she comes to an all-woman city. Mitsuki tries to explain the horror to her, but suddenly a wave of recognition appears on the policewoman's face and she remarks Mitsuki as Keiko now. One look in the mirror and fright runs down her spine as she sees that her face and hairstyle has changed and she is indeed Keiko. The policewoman then drives her to another place where dozens of women welcome them enthusiastically. Upon going inside, she gets to know that it's somebody's wedding and amidst the crowd, she catches Aki standing in front of the mirror. Keiko tries to talk to Aki and whispers that she knows everything and it will be explained later. But for now, Mitsuki has to get prepared for her own wedding. But just as the hairdryer blows wind, Keiko gets a flashback from the fatal air and she drops down screaming in terror. The women on sides quickly pick her up and present her with the wedding dress. 
Due to her mental disturbance, Aki gives one hint that she's both Mitsuki and Keiko, but for now, she must not panic. With reassurance, Keiko dolls herself up with the dress and a version of Sir standing amidst a flurry of feathers flash before her, who states that life is surreal, don't let it get to you. In the meantime, Aki prepares her and as the women huddle around the bride, Aki starts murdering them one by one. She snaps their bones and kills them ruthlessly. As the brutality ends, Aki asks Keiko to proceed with her wedding while giving her a broken glass bottle for safety. Confused and befuddled, Keiko enters the hall where the women welcome her merrily, but a few moments down the aisle they start trash talking and throwing shit at her. The scenario changed from peaceful to conflict as the women take off their clothes to stand in their undergarments. They push her towards the stage, where the pianist reveals her groom to be a hideously stinking, nasty-looking, boar-headed person. The boar-head laughs menacingly while Keiko's shrieks rings the hall. The crowd urges her to kiss the ugly beast, but she thrusts the shard in his neck. As the filthy animal bleeds out, the crowd scatters and Keiko finally spots Aki. She urges Keiko to leave when suddenly their two teachers arrive on scene, now clad in black leather costumes. A thrilling fight erupts between them and the teachers end up getting knocked out by the girls. The women now flee the scene and Aki urges Keiko to run for her life. In her wedding dress, she makes her way to a bridge where another woman welcomes her and inquires about her whereabouts. Under a new name, Izumi, Keiko now looks in the mirror to find herself as a marathon runner, with the wedding dress gone and her face changed. Her friends greet her and make her continue the race. The group of four start the race while the crowd cheers for them. As the group runs, Azumi gets the flashback of her younger self overtaking the other runners in a relay race. Moreover, various other memories of herself running with her friends flash across her mind. As Azumi manages to take over the other competitors, Sir and Teiko appear beside her. Suddenly, Aki appears as well, and upon turning, we see them being chased by teachers and the boar-headed person. Aki urges her to run faster and focus as the attackers approach them with a fast pace. Her friends urge her to escape this world, and Aki advise her to run over the fence on the side. Izumi follows the orders and runs off through the woods to finally arrive in a huge cave. As she looks around, a girl in a uniform appears and pulls her in the darkness where Izumi comes across dozens of other girls in uniforms, with their heads bowed downwards, standing in a trance. The girl who took her here blames her for all the atrocity and pain being inflicted upon them. With that, she states that Izumi must die and in order to carry it out, she takes a blade and tries to kill her, but Aki arrives on scene just in time and saves Izumi. After killing her and fleeing the scene, Aki urges Izumi to scream her real name again and again. She drives her to shout out the statement, I'm Musuki, as she shrieks the words, we witness that Izumi is no more and Musuki has returned to her actual state. After realizing this, Aki gives her the solution that in order to escape this world, which they've been put deliberately in, Mitsuki has to rip apart the cables inserted in Aki's arm and she'll be able to enter the male world. With the acknowledge that her friend will die, she gradually takes out the cables amidst the tears and rips away Aki's flesh. With a strong tug, we see her body ripped into two pieces and behind her an illuminated doorway is revealed. Cautiously, Mitsuki enters the door to find herself in a kitchen full of men. She walks out in the street to find it a male world, but suddenly her eyes catch a poster of herself, Keiko and Izumi, at whom random men are sneering. As she proceeds to look at it, the headliner states, The legendary game is back. Tag, now in 3D. As she looks at it in disbelief, a man emerges from the street crowd and asks her to follow him, but Mitsuki recognizes him from somewhere and goes unconscious. Later, she wakes up to find herself in a cave. Sensing a light source at the end, she walks through it to come across a tomb where several schoolgirls stand as sculptures. She strolls through the area. She comes across an old man in a red coat playing tag 3D. Mitsuki watches in bewilderment as she sees herself as the main character in the game and the old guy plays her through school, in the wedding event, and through the marathon. As she stands there aghast, the old man states that she died a long time ago, but her DNA was captured and turned into a 3D game. Moreover, her friends were also captured upon which Mitsuki looks at the glass box, inside which she finds her various forms, as well as Aki, completely stuffed and stupefied. As the reality dawns on her, the old man starts laughing at her fate and how her DNA is just used for their entertainment. In the meantime, the guy from the street arrives and undresses himself. He lays on the bed and beckons Mitsuki to accompany him. As she stares in disbelief, the old man cheers on that his last wish will now come true. Helpless and unprotected, she limps to the bed and observes the pillow. Slowly, she lays down beside the guy, but suddenly Sir's words ring in her ears and her vision grabs the manifestation from the lake where her blood droplet from her finger turns the feather blood red. That snaps her out of the daze and she overcomes the man and tries to strangle him. Ultimately, she uses the pillow to hit the guy repeatedly and we witness the feathers turn to red. After dealing with him, Mitsuki approaches the old man, snatches his stick, and impales herself with its tip. Red feathers erupt from her body as she goes lifeless, leaving the old man crying out in desperation. After the incident, the movie approaches its final moments where we see the repetitive moments from the past, but this time, Mitsuki kills herself first in every scenario. On the bus, she kills herself with a pin. In the wedding, she commits suicide by impaling herself with a broken bottle, and finally, Izumi also dies on the racetrack. 
Afterwards, we see Mitsuki lying in an open snowfield. She gets up and leaves with one last statement that it's over now, and the film concludes. Thanks for watching, guys!